Today we will showcase the use of IDEM. IDEM is a CLI tool that can be installed as a binary or installed as a P package since it's based on Python. Like any other CLI, you got plenty of uh, actions that you can use, being a couple of them the most important, starting with Scribe, which allows you to scan your infrastructure and discover what is already out there, and the state command, which essentially will enforce any new state that you want to have or the existing state that you want to have in your cloud environment. For this demo, I'm using IDEM version 15, and IDEM takes advantage of the plugins. Plugins extend the IDEM capability. In this case, for this demo, we'll use the IDEM Azure plugin so I can gain access to resources in uh, public cloud Azure. Uh, you may be wondering if we are going to be using Cloud Azure, we need to authenticate with them, right? And in order to do that, it's very simple to do so. I didn't give me the ability to define profiles within my plugins. Uh, as in this example, you can see that for my Azure plugin, I have defined in this mockup file uh, a couple of profiles, the default one and the TMM. And for any other plugin like AWS or any other plugin that I may install, I will use the very same file and define whatever credentials are required by the plugin. Once I have created the plugin, I can leverage the command encrypt, which essentially will create a, a key that can later explore. That's what I'm showing here. And the actual file that is going to get in, uh, encrypted, this file is a .fernet file the item will be able to decrypt using this account key. As you can see in this demo, I'm actually declaring those as OS environment. Once I have access to them, I can, I can deploy and use commands with item in the Cloud Azure. You have also the option to use um, uh, parameters if you don't want to use the uh, OS environment variables, that's perfectly fine, and you can use it across all the item commands. So that's it, that's how easy you can do the authentication. From this point, Let's find out what is out there. And describe, once again, is one of the most important commands that you can use with IDEM. This will allow you to discover, scan, and essentially bring back the current state of my cloud infra infrastructure or my resources. In this case, the ones living in Azure. So let's take a look. If I want to find out what network interfaces are available in my environment, in my default environment, all I need to do is run this command, IDEM describe, and the name of the, uh, the plugin, the, 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 the resource group, and the actual resource group. In this case, you can see all the network interfaces available in my default profile, in my Cloud Azure profile. You can see here clearly all the properties that were fetched right now from the cloud environment. This is what is out there. Uh, if I want to uh, find out about another resource like Subnets, it's the same kind of command. I'm just asking for a different kind of resource, but the same logic. At this moment, you can see how fast uh, Iden was able to discover and bring back to me the current state. And this could be for any resource. It's the same logic for any resource and any plugin, in fact. You can see here, I'm also now scanning existing resource group in my default profile. And you can see I got plenty, very well defined. Uh, you may wonder what about virtual machine. Yes, that's also possible. You can find the virtual machines. In this case, you can see that I actually don't have any virtual machine in my in my profile. However, if I change my profile because I have more than one, uh, I can easily switch between environments. So in this case, I'm gonna do the same uh, scan, but this time I'm gonna ask to I'm gonna ask Iden to look into the profile I call TMM, and here you are. That's, again, this is a different cloud endpoint. It's showing me the virtual machines that are available to me that are already defined. And actually, the core state, you can see how fast is actually this operation happening. Uh, but not only that, we have multiple resources uh, out there. I need a way to filter. I didn't give me the ability to do the filtering so I can query specific resources. Uh, and before that, I use uh, the uh, JMS path tutorial um, technology, the language, which is very easy to, to use and is embedded in item. With that, I can scan and actually find out the specific resources using that way to filter in this case, I'm just using the group name. So you can see now I'm looking for a resource group filtering by um, 
resort name. And what is more important, I can actually output that information in many different formats, which is excellent because I then will allow me to attach to multiple uh, backend systems and actually share information from there. Uh, think about queue or things like that that I can that I can tap into and, ex and, and, and provide information. But let's go a little bit further. I'm going to create a, a stay. I'm going to turn that output into a, a state file. In this case, uh, I have a DSX system resource group that I just dumped into uh, an SL SLS file, which define my stay. And I want to create a new one. For that, I'm just going to replace the, the name of this existing one with the ID and the name of uh, a new resource group that I may use for a different purpose. And you can see that exactly what I'm getting from the describe is exactly what I'm using for my code. So I don't really need to learn more code. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to remove, I don't have any more properties. So I'm going to actually just remove some of these lines. And I got enough information to, to create my, my, my resource group. You can see right here that I don't have any. So if I try to, to run, um, to create this resource, uh, I can use the state command, which is going to enforce my state, right? This is my new state. I want to have a second resource group. So that's my new intention for that. I can just use the item state command and just point it to the state file. And with that click, and you can see how fast, how easy it is for item to build a new state. I just I didn't have to learn a new language. I just collected, uh, scanned what I was out there and run reusing it to create a new, a new resource. So now if we filter looking for that resource group that we just created, you can find it right here. And you can run this command as many times you, you, you want. And you can see right here that at this point it's telling me, yeah, your state that you are trying to achieve is already there. So I don't really need to do anything else. So if we actually review the resource group in the um, uh, Azure GUI, you can see that we can find it and we can find the, the, the properties associated to this resource, right? The resource group. So, so this is great. So let's say that now I, I change my intention. Now I say, hey, I want to have metadata associated, right? That's the new state overall. All I need to do is to update my SL, SLS file and then try again. In this case, I have the option to actually even query um, what's going to happen. And can that, uh, I can ask, if I do this change, what's going to happen? And it's telling me, yes, this is a new state. I will update it for you. This is the information I'm going to update for you. So if we are actually running, you can see exactly the same command as before. All I'm doing is changing my intention, adding more properties. So now I can have this new um, uh, metadata uh, configured in this resource. And you can see it's telling me now that, yeah, I have done it for you. And again, I want to emphasize how fast that was. And if we scan the resource, you can see that, yeah, it's properly updated. It's uh, the metadata that we just push now is available, actually. If we refresh the uh, Sure GUI, we can see that for these resources indeed having the, um, the metadata that we just um, added. But what about the um, configuration drift, right? It's very common that for whatever reason you can get changes push beyond item. So let's say that somebody comes to the GUI and they have uh, added a, a, a tag of, uh, of their own. So now my resource has drifted. Now compared to my stay, my intention that I define item is not aligned, but that's all right. Uh, all I need to do is to run exactly the same command. In fact, we can verify that the new tag is there, but I don't even need, to, I don't really need to do that. I can just run the very same command and that call my stay and I then will make sure to fix the trip for me. So you can see that it discovered that there was something that is out of my in original intention. And if we search again, you will see that it has fixed it for us. And that extra tag is gone. It's actually aligned to my current state, to my current in intention. So I don't care how my configuration drift for whatever reason at any point I can bring it back and think about this using it in, an, in a third party system like Gabriel's VRA. Um, it will be able to fix the remediation as simple as if we were building these, these resources. So there is no difference, it's the same logic behind. But not only that, um, Ivan has the ability to, 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 to leverage uh, Jinja template. If you're familiar with Salt, uh, Salt is, is one of the most popular uh, template. Um, 
engines that you can use and it's embedded also inside Jinja, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, inside Iron. So I can use that template in and you can see right here, I can use it in many different capacity. In this case, uh, I want to start using it to define attributes that I can later on use it in many resources. In fact, in this case, you can see uh, I'm actually defining multiple resources, multiple properties using uh, Jinja. Uh, but not only that, I, I can take it one step further. I can take Jinja to apply some, um, some logic, like some um, uh, decision points and loops that I can leverage. Like in this case, if you look closely, I have a property that is telling me that only if it's true, then it needs to go and create the other resources. If I change it to false and we run this, just again using the same item state command and pointing item to this specific SLS file, you will see that item will evaluate these resources, including the, uh, the Jinja template, and it's going to realize that, okay, this property is false. So if I run it, I just need to, to, to create or modify or deal with one single resource, right? Because that's why my if is telling it. Only when it's true, I need you to jump into the next set of resources. So if we roll back this into true once again, now my logic is different. Now the, the, the if is going to be true. So then it's going to go and access those resources, right? And you will see again, same command, nothing has changed. But this time it's telling me that, okay, now I actually am going to add two extra resources. And the resource for that is that once my, my, my property is true, it's going to go into one single loop that has one single definition, but it's going to be running as many times as resources I have defined in my array. So that's how easy it is to manage some, some, um, some uh, decision points leveraging Jinja within item. And something very important that I want to emphasize, I've been creating and updating resources. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because I have these directives inside the Azure uh, resource definition, uh, being the most common presence, which allowed me to create and update resources. But what if I want to delete those resources? I just need to change um, the directive for absent. And essentially, I'm going to tell uh, Ivan that my new intention is to remove these, these resources. And just like before, I can even test it. I can see if this, uh, what's going to happen if I change this um, information in my state. So Ivan is telling me that, yes, if you do that, I will delete it for you. So now I say, yeah, go ahead, run it. Delete it for me. You can see how fast, again, it went through it. Uh, it executed the command. It's telling me what's happening and telling me that, sure, this is your new intention. We will honor that intention, which is essentially removing this resource. And you can take it one step further. I just show you a few resources, but what if I want to create a virtual machine, right? Uh, in this uh, state file, I'm actually doing it. So I'm going to change the, the directive. I want to I wanna make sure that now we create a virtual machine. So I'm going to go and replace the directive to present. So I want to have all these resources available. I'm going to instruct to item to create these resources for me. And I'm going to start creating resource group. We just saw it. But I'm going to create also the virtual network. I'm going to create a subnet that is associated to it. The public IP that I want to have also is another resource I can manipulate. Uh, the security groups. I want to create multiple security groups. And, and you can see that I can define as many as I want per item definition. Uh, I want to create a network interface. And, Obviously, when I create this network interface, things like the security groups are going to be referenced. Uh, um, uh, the IP pools and everything that I've been creating is being referenced, right? So I'm going to create all these resources from scratch. But I want to emphasize that they are going to be referenced to each other to the point that I, I once I have all those credit, they can create my virtual machine. And this virtual machine can have a standard parameters. You can see uh, my SSH keys. I can push cloud information to initialize the application, metadata everything that you will normally can handle with a virtual machine in Azure. So, and, and the logic is the same. I can just run the same, the same state. In this case, I'm going to include a flag called reconciler, which essentially instructs item to say, well, if you see some dependencies, that's okay. Don't give up, create a dependency and then try again uh, until you finish all the dependencies and essentially build my virtual machine from scratch. Obviously I may have already this information created, I just need to point it to the virtual machine. That's very possible. But here I want to show how powerful item could be, how fast it can create all the resources needed for my 
my virtual machine and the virtual machine everything from the scratch. So you can see right here, and you can actually, if you look closely at the output, it's telling me that, yeah, some of the resources say it's updated because it started with them, it had another pass, and it keep continuing until all the dependencies are built, and finally it comes down to the virtual machine and say, yes, I got everything I need to build the virtual machine, and again, I can run these commands as many times as I need it, because at the end of the day, uh, what Iden is going to do is to keep the state that I have defined within my SLS file and make it happen. So if I run it as many times, the same command, all that happens there is that if something is missing, it's going to be created. If something is out there, it, 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 will, it will leave it alone and just inform me. So if we actually look into the resource group inside the GUI, you can see that now all those resources are being created by Iden every single resource that I define in my single state file, which I actually can break down into multiple files and even import or even use Jinja to create, again, some specific um, logic inside and templates. Uh, and now if we go back to the original virtual machine that I didn't have in my environment, you can see that now it's created because if you remember when I run the command, I actually didn't include the specific com profile because I wanted to use the default one. That's why now is that virtual machine that when we search what's missing is now created. So thank you so much and hope you enjoy.